Never do this if you go to school in Japan. After going to school in Japan during my youth, I know all the things you should never do in Gakko. But if you always wanted to know what it's actually like to go to school in Japan and live out that real life anime, here are three major things to never do in Japan to avoid getting yelled at by your sensei. Number one, never make your classroom dirty. In Japanese schools, janitors don't exist. Instead, for 15 minutes every single day, you have to clean the classroom. Typically, right after lunch, you gotta either do the zoking, hoki if you're lucky, toire if you're unlucky. I remember racing with my friends during zoking time just to make it a little bit more fun. But if you make a big mess in school, the whole class is gonna look at you and say, Oh my, nani shitenne? Number two, never forget to finish your school lunch or your sensei is gonna flip out. Compared to Lunchables I saw in America during lunch, Japanese kyushoku is pretty good. I've had kare, yakisoba, udon, and maybe even katsu for lunch. So you better believe when I saw that pepperoni and pizza Lunchables in front of me. I was like, nani sore? However, even in Japan, there may come a time where you would see something in front of your plate during Kyushoku time that you might not really like. Maybe it's ninjing, daikon, kariflawa. They're gonna throw every kind of yasai at you, I swear. And with that, you're like, ah, oh, shiitake wa chotto. So you decide not to eat it. However, in Japan, especially in Japanese schools, there's a big philosophy against being tabezugirai. Tabezugirai means tabezu, which means to not eat, and girai, which means to hate. So hate to not eat. But essentially it means you're being picky and not actually trying the food, but making a judgment that you don't like the taste, you don't like how it looks, is unacceptable. You're gonna get that sensei, a little bit of senen goroshi if you, uh, they don't like that. I remember I had a fourth grade teacher. His name was Satoshi. It was. Well, it was close to Satoshi's first name. You're not gonna call him Sat. You're not gonna call him their first name in Japan. In Japan, you're not supposed to call people, especially higher status, with their first name. But anyways, this guy, Sensei Satoshi. He was a pretty buff guy, you know. I was in like fourth grade. Compared to that, he was a pretty buff guy. He had glasses on, but he was still kind of intimidating. But during Kyushuk time, during lunchtime, girls in the class, typically girls, 90% I'm going to be honest, would have a specific food that they don't like and just just didn't want to eat it, you know, it's a little bit my taste buds ain't agree. Typically it was like sometimes maitake, some mushrooms, or even natto, if you don't natto, it's like fermented soybeans in Japan, you know, some people say it smells a little, it, it looks a little funky, I, I get it, even for a Japanese person, uh, it might look a little funky, and then just... This, this 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 girl in my classroom would say, Chotto neba neba shite tabetakunai. Neba neba, which means it's sticky. Anamanapia, tabetakunai, I don't wanna eat it. But let me tell you, Satoshi sensei, sensei Satoshi did not take kindly. That's not allowed. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video so far, it really helps out the channel. And if you want to be actually able to understand these pop-up Japanese phrases I say online and you don't know how to start learning Japanese, check out my Skillshare all the way from Hiragana, the first writing systems that allows you to pronounce and write each Japanese letter, and then Katakanas, which is the second writing system you also must know, which will allow you to write your own name, and then basic grammar so they could formulate all the sentences. I think it's one of the best ways to start off if you don't know how to begin. So one thing I would have to emphasize before I finish this story is that Japanese school lunches are completely different from American school lunches like cafeterias mainly don't really exist like 99% of schools would especially elementary schools would actually just move your desk during lunch and make a little beat pods like four to five students and you would eat lunch together even with your teacher so teachers would move from pod to pod every week so it's, it could be kind of fun because you get to see them in a different light and they actually eat the same kyushoku as you however because the teacher is there obviously he's not going to be as strict as during class he still has his he's looking around are you finishing your food so what would happen is you're actually not allowed to throw away your food or technically give it to your tomodachi or your friends. I remember this girl didn't like natto all the way after lunch 
after the cleaning time and during period five of Sansu of math class, she still had her desk sideways. Everyone has it forwards and learning their textbooks. She still had it sideways with her Kyushoku out and with her just staring at Natto and just, 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 just a little bit of tears in her eyes, just staring at it while everyone's learning math. Eventually though, she was able to consume and finish her food. So maybe it was a little bit of a traumatic experience, but you know, <laughs> if you go to Japan, most people will be able to eat any kind of food. And, you know, but culturally, I'm going to be honest with you, if you don't have an allergy, they're not going to tolerate that. <laughs> but instead, you know, they might flip out if they see uh, Lunchables. So, you know, you could say, hey, I don't want to eat this mushrooms, but you don't want to eat my Lunchables. So, <laughs> I don't know if that made sense. Now, if you were smart, you would catch your sensei, you know, looking away, talking to some other student, and then give the food you don't like to your classmates right next to you. You can't do that technically, but you know, if you don't get caught, no, you didn't do anything wrong. Like I was typically that guy in my pod because I was always hungry and I would just quickly, you know, just put it up. I'll eat it real quick. You could trust me with it. And also one thing I remember is that every day you actually had to drink a glass bottle of Yunu, which is milk, which is kind of weird, but I don't know why. Number three, never forget to join all sorts of school clubs. Firstly, school clubs or activities are called bukatsu in Japan and Japanese students love it and they go ham. Let's go over sports that are popular in Japan. What kind of schedule with practice and games you will have to go through. The important thing you have to know about school sports in Japan is that it's a whole year round. So starting from all the way from middle school and high school, you have to decide which one sport you're gonna play and you're gonna play that whole year round, even during the summer break. So basically, most of the time, you can only play one sport for the rest of your school days, school years, from middle school on, really. It was so special. I know that in the US, you could play three sports. You could play a little bit of football, soccer in the fall, a little wrestling, a little basketball, basque in the winter, and then a little tennis or something in the spring. However, in Japan, if you play baseball, you're playing baseball in the summer. You're gonna play baseball when it's snowing out. You're gonna play baseball all the time. For this fact, I do get mixed responses from both my tomodachi in Japan and America. And sometimes Japanese people would say, I wish I could have played a little bit of tennis, a little bit of golf. You know, I, I feel like I had that in me. But sometimes my American friends would say, man, I wish I could have played football the whole year. I wish I could have gotten 37 touchdowns and 10,000 rushing yards. I would have been in the record books. A little bit of Ice Shield 21. If you know that manga, you're, it's the OG manga. You better know that. You know, I could have been like that. Anyways, that is a key difference of sports. You should know before going to Japan. The most popular sports in Japan from the ranking order is first kendo. Kendo is like fencing, but way cooler personally I think. You get a legitimate wooden sword, and then you get to smack people, and you have an armor on, and you get to actually hit people. Now unlike fencing, you can't just poke at them. That doesn't count. You gotta actually say, man, and you gotta smack them pretty hard for the points to count. I think one of the ways you could, you, you could see in a gintama, you know, they did kendo style practices when he was young. Next, volleyball is pretty popular, both boys and girls. I think haiku, tobe fla made it pretty popular. Baseball, of course, is the most popular sport in Japan, but in Japan, you have to get a marugari, a little bit of buzz cut when you play baseball in Japan. So I personally could never play baseball in Japan because I like my hair. A little bit of fly, a little, I wanna look like Sasuke. <laughs> I want to look like Itachi and the Uchiha Club, you know what I'm saying? I can't be looking like a little buzz cut guy. If you want to play baseball in Japan, you better be willing to get a buzz cut. Maybe you're fine with the buzz cut, so maybe you'll fly with it. Soccer, Saka is also popular in Japan. It's getting more and more popular. You'll see us in the Japanese World Cup. We could do it, Samurai Japan. And basketball and tennis is actually getting a little bit of popularity as well. Now, what if you don't want to play sports? Getting running around, being a little sweaty, you know, maybe a little, a little bit of contact, it's not my thing. But don't worry, there's actually plenty of things that you could actually do that's not sports related. There's the manga anime bu, in which you analyze manga ka, anime, who made the anime, why did they choose that style? Uh, essentially, I've heard that all they do is kind of just watch anime. Engeki bu, which is a play club. You, you get to personally decide which play you're gonna do, who's gonna be the characters. I heard a lot of drama take place in Engeki bu. I've heard a little bit of vicious, vicious character assassination. <laughs> 
But anyways, if you like plays, you could try the Engekibu. There's also the Sadobu, which is Japanese tea ceremony club. You might be like, that's a little awfully specific, but Japanese people don't mess around with tea ceremony. There's a certain way of handling and drinking tea and even making tea that will be pretty fun. You know, you can see, you already see, even in uh, America, you see matcha and a little whisk, whisk, whisk getting popular, you know? Imagine that times 100. Keion Gakubu, which means like high pitched sound club, but essentially means you get to make your own rock band, literally, with one drummer, one bassist, one guitarist, one singer, and then you get to basically just act like you started a rock band. And you get to perform during club festivals, and people actually get pretty lit. People actually go about there, and you know, they're, they're pretty good. Of course, Jujutsu Kaisen's Horabu horror club do exist. Japan has a long history of spirits. I mean, Jesus Kaisen, the spirits in Jesus Kaisen is essentially just horror spirits that Japanese people sometimes suspiciously believe in. So there's a lot of old buildings that you might like to go. Also, Japanese haunted houses are terrifying. So Japanese horror clubs are pretty big because there's a lot of lo long history in Japan. So there's a lot of horror related things that you might witness. And non-sports clubs, you could actually choose more than one and you could actually do it with sports clubs. So sports clubs, you can only choose one, but non-sports clubs, if time permits, you could choose multiple. Finally, if you don't want to join any clubs, then you could join the Kitakubu, which literally means go home club, in which after school ends, what you would do is walk out of the school into your house and chillax. Basically, you're not in a club. I don't know why they call it a club. Like, boo means club in Japanese, so they just say boo. Kitaku means to return home, so return home club. But people do call it that. Kitakubu. Oh, kitabu, kitakubu deshita. Oh, I was in the club of going home. So, it's not a club. Subscribe to join the Nakama. Leave a like if you haven't already. It really helps out. And peace.